Hello, Night Nation. I'm Trey Strokel alongside Adam Eaton. Welcome into Sons of UCF Live. Adam, hello. Greetings, Trace. Good to have you back. I'm glad you enjoyed uh, the holiday week and some time with some family, but good to have you back here and down to business, Trace. I love it. Thank you very much for the PTO. By the way, I've got some more requests coming your way. What? what? Have some, have some more travel. You and UCF Mike are just <laughs> taking to unbelievable. By the way, we could make a ton of money on the pre-show activity for this mm -hmm. show and the yeah. post-show yes. conversations. We would make a fortune yes. just four minutes ago, complete wipeout on the earbuds. I don't know what happened. And now, now I'm on the base. So what's new? What's new in your world? Oh, Trace, just enjoying a lovely Thursday afternoon. Some UCF football practice took place today. We're getting closer to the spring game, getting more excited, but also sad because I'm, what is it, like 10 days away from no more football for another, what, four months. And that's a sad, sad, dark time, Adam's life. Well, I thought about that today because it's a feast or famine situation, right? There's the media availabilities, extended practice access, uh, 30 minutes or so. And uh, then they brought four players in addition, in addition to Coach Harris today. And a, a lot of things are happening in a short period of time. And a week or so from now, <laughs> there won't be anybody to talk to. It'll all be over for months. Months. I'm trying to save some of those interviews to get us through the slow times. Uh, but I will say kudos to UCF because they are bringing more players to the podium, more players to some of these post-practice scrums. And you're going to hear from guys that we never heard from before, guys that we didn't get a chance to, you know, to really interact with. Uh, if you're not familiar with our YouTube channel, check that out, Sons of UCF. Andrew Cherico has a conversation with, with Jared Baker, a guy who's been at UCF for a long time, position switches, changes. And it's such a great conversation to hear a young man like Jared who's been through a ton and what he's trying to do now this year for UCF. It's guys we haven't had a chance to interact with before, Trey. So I think it's really cool what they've done. I agree with you that it was going to be sad in a week when we're scraping together uh, top five lists of, of our favorite hamburger <laughs> toppings. But for right now, let's enjoy the, the opportunities we have to talk to some of these young student athletes. I think it's been really cool what UCF has done. A great conversation. I got to give you and Matt Merchell a hat tip today. Great conversation with Colton Boomer. A lot of conversation about what happened with Colton last year. He was super vulnerable in that, in that interview you all did with him, um, really revealing. If you haven't had a chance to check that out on our YouTube channel, it is, it's equal parts fascinating, some parts heartbreaking at times, actually. Uh, it's a really interesting conversation. So kudos to you and Matt for, for getting Colton and, and getting a comfortable space for him to share some of his story. Well, he was up at the podium, and then after a couple of rounds of questions, they, they break everybody out. And today we also had kicker Grant Reddick, Hunter Mitch McCarthy, Longstaffer Gage King. So the specialist room uh, were in that conversation today. And, and, and you said it right there, Colton was very revealing. Uh, you know, I asked him if he had been healthy or what his health was throughout the season. I mean, we see a kid miss a kick and, and get upset by it and, uh, and, and think that's all of the story, right? Uh, we've, we've talked about this endlessly throughout uh, the off season and, and during season, you know, uh, confidence shot. And, and he, he revealed that he'd been dealing with some, some injuries and kind of battled through, but, you know, it was also very uh, revealing that perhaps he should have been wiser and in, in, in not playing. So uh, I think, as you said there, uh, he, he was very vulnerable and opened up on camera. Yeah. Again, I encourage everyone to take a look at it. It, it was, again, it was equal parts, fascinating, some parts, heartbreaking, some parts, you know, you just scratch your head and go like, yeah, why, why would you play? Why wouldn't you sit? But then you put yourself in the shoes of where we were at this time last year. And look, we're all guilty of this race. We would have killed. Why isn't Boomer out there? What's wrong with him? Ah, he's got this. Like, we always want, want players to play through the injury and how bad could it really be? So it was just a really one of those, um, you know, sort of gut check moments where you listen to it and you realize these are 20 year old kids, man, <laughs> like just trying to figure life out and, and real life stuff is happening. But again, I, I think, um, you know, I don't know that Colton will ever watch this, but I, I want to commend him for his vulnerability. It's not easy to get in front of strangers, right? I mean, you and Matt are, are people he's seen before, but you're not family. You're not you're not friends to him. And to get in front of strangers and be vulnerable and share what you're going through, both physically and mentally. A lot of the conversation was about his his mental health and his mental preparation. Um, you know, I, I commend Boomer for for doing that and makes it easy to root for the kid right now. It makes it easy to to want to cheer him on and make sure that he's healthy, both physically, mentally and emotionally. 
as the season kicks off. But um, again, kudos to you and kudos to UCF again for letting these guys become available so we get a chance to get some insight and uh, to hear from from some players and that maybe we don't always get a chance to interact with. Yeah, you talked about the post podium scrum about 10 minutes that we have up on the YouTube channel. Let's listen to a clip, though, that came from Colton at the podium talking about what he dealt with last season. Well, how did it affect you? I, I mean, I came in the week before the ball camp, I was in the mood, so it's like, I just said, tape it up, like, let's, let's go, which is the type of guy I am. Like, I'm not going to sit on the sideline because I got a little hurt. Like, I'm gonna, I want to be on the field helping the team, but I definitely, I didn't do a good part of knowing my body. And so, I mean, I kind of just feel sorry that what I did to the team being selfish and, like, putting myself out on the field, like, I was just said, hey, like, this is not good. Like, I can't, I'm not at my best to, like, bring my best for the team. You know what I mean? So, definitely. That shows your work ethic, uh, your determination to be contributing yeah, to the team? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was just young and dumb. I mean, not saying that I'm not now, but, like, I mean, I definitely learned. I feel bad that I was at the cost of the team. But, I mean, I definitely played the tough guy. Like, oh, like, I'm not hurt. What are you talking about? Like, just being stupid. But, I mean, it was, it was just humbling. Like, it was super humbling. So, I... I'm grateful for it, but I also do have a little bit of, bit of regret for what I like how I affected the team. Yeah, it was interesting as well at the podium. He spoke of seeing in the off season a sports psychologist to help him uh, deal with you know the, the mental aspects of the game and, and what goes into the position. One of the interviews that I did post was with uh, Grant Reddick, the uh, other kicker, and uh, off mic. I uh, wish he had said this to me on mic, but he's been working on kickoffs. So we may see him. There's been no talk of that. Uh, perhaps that will come up with Coach Malzahn following the scrimmage on Saturday, but uh, Grant's been working on kickoffs. So perhaps that'll take a little pressure off and wear and tear off of Colton over the course and the grind of a season. First off, I always appreciate a guy who can do an impression of himself, right? When he, he does it, he mimics his own voice. He's a tough guy. I love that. But let me ask you a question, Trace. I asked Mike on the podcast this week. Of the three units, offense, defense, special teams, ranking order for me, your unit that you're most concerned about. So give me from, from most concerned to least concerned. Most concerned to least concerned. I'll still put it most concerned about the defense. Okay. Um, and uh, special teams in the middle and least concerned about the offense. So that doesn't mean that there aren't some areas yeah. of concern in that, but least concerned about the offense and um, most concerned still about the defense until I see that they can stop somebody running the ball and uh, yeah. see better performances than we saw a year ago. I, I had to laugh, though, in the, the scrum part that's on the Suns YouTube channel, Colton's referencing a song. You know, usually we're the ones asking questions, and suddenly he's he's referencing a song, and that's not one of my strengths. I might know a song, but I can't name the artist, or I'll know the artist, but I can't name one of their songs. And several people have pointed out that he was asking us about a 38 special song called Hold On Loosely, which I'm familiar with that song, and I had to look it up. 1981, well, well before Colton's time, but he made reference to that song and stumped uh, Matt and I during that portion uh, of the, uh, the scrum. So check that out. We heard from Tim Harris Jr. today, the offensive coordinator. There's a lot of confidence from him uh, about the offense that, that he sees uh, so far. And I think we talked about this on Around the Kingdom. You talked about it on the Suns pod this week. Uh, no drama this spring, right? And I think we're not used to that over the last couple of seasons. Mikey and, uh, you know, the quarterback battle with, uh, John Rice Plumley and those sorts of topics, Gus and play calling and things like that, kind of smooth sailing so far. A lot of times when, as a staff, when you get a new quarterback, you got to worry about the jitteriness of, you know, just not being confident, but you see a confident guy out there. So that's the number one thing for me that we walk away from every practice that you see him gaining confidence every day, him being deliberate in what he do, him being able to lead his teammates. And that's, me, that's the biggest thing that I watch. Because physically, KJ can do everything that we want to do in our offense. But just the off-the-field stuff and him being able to coach his teammates and them respond to him is what I want to see. And I'm seeing that. Coach. How does that make you feel, Adam, when you hear what I felt was a great deal of confidence from Tim Harris Jr. in his offense and, in particular, quarterback KJ Jefferson? 
Honestly, it's not surprising, right? Like, I think you just said it, right? That's the unit that has the least bit of concern right now. Sure, there's some concern about the receiving core and who's going to step in for Javon Baker's shoes. There's obviously the offensive line is going to have to kind of come together and be a little bit patchwork from last season, uh, um, you know, replacing Alec Collar, but you feel like you got a good a good replacement there in Randy Pittman. So that's the, that, that's not surprising that he, he feels good about the offense. I think what you love to hear is you just hear continuing – you know, good things about KJ Jefferson. And I understand you're not going to hear bad things at the podium, right? He's not going to be like, man, that guy's terrible. But you, you like the positivity that he's showing, the the things that he's saying. And I said this on the pod this week, you know, we have, we've seen all of seven clips of KJ Jefferson, right, on social media. But everything off the field at the podium, his teammates, he's he's winning, you know, he's winning over the fan base right now, I think, with just the things that he's saying and the way that he's, he's, he's carrying himself. And you hear Tim Harris lend some voice to that, right, about his maturity, about the way that he's integrating his teammates the way that he's becoming a leader. So I, I'm not surprised by that, frankly, and I'm glad to, to hear it. Now, when rubber meets road, will all that come to fruition remains to be seen. But I'm not surprised to hear there's a level of confidence and that Tim Harris likes what he's seen out of, out of his offense so far. Yeah, very bullish on the running backs as well. High praise for R.J. Harvey. But who wouldn't be, right? You like what you have in that room. Um, a question that did not get asked of him today, hopefully – I or someone else will ask Coach Malzahn on Saturday is uh, where they stand uh, at center. Uh, I had to laugh, and I, I couldn't from where I was positioned the other day uh, during our open availability time. I could hear Coach Malzahn, but I don't know who he was yelling at, but he was yelling at a center, and he said, that's why we recruited you to snap the ball properly. And I, but I don't know which guy. I couldn't get over to see who it was, and then mm. he, he blew the whistle. Well, Everybody started way, moving, but it me laugh and he was well, getting that guy uh for for that for the snap Either way, it's not good. <laughs> Whoever it is, that's not that's not something you want to hear uh, with any offensive line group. Our, our first guest obviously knows a ton about offensive linemen, but that's not something I think you ever want to hear any coach saying. Is we recruited you to put the ball in the hands of the quarterback. That that we got to get figured out. Well, one scrimmage done, uh, another one coming Saturday. Close to the media, uh, some family and maybe some shareholders, and that'll be there. Maybe Coach Lounsbury will be there. Let's welcome in Paul Lounsbury, former longtime assistant UCF coach. Coach, welcome back to Suns Live. Thank you, Trace. It's good to see you. Adam, good to see you as well. Coach, a question I had for you. I, I, by the way, I see you. You're tucked in, a way, in an area that I, I can never be allowed to go walk over. I would love to go over and say hi to you, but they just would ban me from the field if I walked over I where you were. I didn't see you or I had to come over and talk to you. <laughs> from your experience during a spring camp, how much do you get a sense of a team that you're going to see in the fall? during the spring do you do you kind of get a sense of vibe we heard str you know strong comments from coach Harris there's been a positivity I know that's the case in 130 plus camps going on in spring but how much did you know about your team coming out of spring you have a much a much better idea towards the end of spring um by the way the the center he was yelling at was Walt Flynn the freshman okay so, <laughs> I, I was. I heard that one. Uh, but anyway, uh, Everybody heard it, but I, I wasn't at a point I could see it. No, I was. Uh, I was out there behind him, and that's who he was talking to. And 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 Walt's going to be fine. He's a, he's a really good player, and he's going to be great. Uh, he did have a couple bad snaps, and uh, that's got to get fixed. But uh, he's a freshman, so uh, now at the end of by the end of spring, I think you have a really good idea of what to expect. Although. In this day and age, because of the transfer portal opening back up, there could be a couple of new faces yet uh, in the fall camp that aren't there yet this spring. So there's always that. But I think you have a really good idea of what almost entirely of what your team is going to be like and who the leaders are that are emerging and and uh, who you can depend on. And um, I like what I've seen out there, too. Coach Harris has every right to be very optimistic. I, I like what I've seen from KJ as far as his leadership goes. And like I said earlier, Marcellus Marshall has done a nice job with the offensive line leadership. Uh, and there's some other guys stepping up too. I I think it's, it's, it's a good situation that we're in and I think we're gonna have a good team. Injuries always play a factor, of course. Uh, and uh, I, I, like you were talking about, I have concerns about stopping the run too, but I think we're a whole lot better on defense. I, I know we are. And um, 
as long as we don't turn the ball over on offense, uh, I agree with what you're saying. Defense, special teams, and then offense is, is the area of priority. But I like what I've seen, and, and I think they'll have a very good idea by the end of spring. And this, I will tell you, the scrimmage Saturday is huge because this is the second scrimmage, so it's a it's the chance for those guys who – who showed some things in the first scrimmage to make those corrections and really put some things on film now that solidify their positions. And uh, I think that's, that's incredibly important. And so this will be a, a, a really important scrimmage, probably more important than the spring game. Uh, and it's going to be really closely uh, evaluated to get the, get the uh, players lined up in the right depth. Yeah, on uh, Tuesday, defensive coordinator Roof uh, expressed some frustration not seeing the separation. He wasn't happy about how they stopped the run and R.J. Harvey uh, during practice. Um, he talked about seeing that separation. As you just mentioned, the importance of the scrimmage on Saturday, that's a big opportunity for a guy to take a step up over another guy. It sure is, and and uh, you are you are what you put on film. You know, and, and this is a chance for them to put on film in a game situation that shows that they can be the guy. And uh, so this is critical. I, and it's like I said, the coaches are going to be very, very carefully evaluating it. Well, Coach, it sounds like you, you agreed with Trace's ranking of defense, special teams, offense in terms of areas of quote unquote concern on the defensive side of the ball. What are some things that you'd like to see them kind of sharpen up a little bit as they wrap up camp here? Well, I, Consistency mostly. Uh, I, I lick. I really like what I've seen. The new linebacking core uh, is much better, I think, than it was last year. Uh, they've got a couple of safeties that have come in. I I counted today with the first team defense. I think there were five transfers on the mm -hmm. field with the first team defense. So I think that's important. Um, uh, I think I I really like what I've seen. I like the aggressiveness they're showing. Um, They've made some plays in the secondary as well, but it, it's it's a two-edged sword. If you if you have too much success on defense, then you worry about the offense. If you have too much success on offense, you worry about the defense. So, you know, it's hard to tell always uh, where you're at exactly because you know players get used to playing against each other, and so it's kind of it's it's a little different animal than when you start playing others. I was going to ask that question in terms of the scrimmage. How how different is it, Coach? I know there's some people there, but how different for players is it playing in an empty stadium versus playing with a crowd like a spring game or a regular game? Do you, do you think that impacts players at all, that it's kind of an empty stadium? It's just, you know, 10 of their closest friends and and them and them sort of playing in the field? I think it affects them a lot. Uh, I, think, I think the crowd, and especially the crowd at UCF because of the way they've been supportive and have been loud and been at home, uh, I think it's a huge advantage, and I think the players really respond to it a lot. So I think it's a big thing. Um, but, you know, in the spring, you, you get what you get, and you, you have to go out there and perform, and it doesn't – the players have to not think about who's in the stands and who's not. And really during the during the season, they, ha they have to not think about that either, but there's a natural uh, – when that crowd gets behind you, there's a natural uh, – influx of of adrenaline that goes through every player when you play in front of a big crowd of uh, and a crowd that's cheering for you have you ever had a player like that coach in your coaching career that maybe a practice you know wasn't all that but when the lights came on was just a just a, a beast on the field uh very few um usually it didn't get much of a chance if they didn't <laughs> perform well in practice so uh but there are guys that I think are gamers to some degree. Uh, I don't know if you can really define it clearly, uh, but there are guys that under pressure play better. Uh, but usually you got to, you got to play those guys that perform and practice and show what they can do. Uh, but every now and then there's, there might be a couple of guys that are close and all of a sudden one steps up in the game and surprises you a little bit. So, uh, you know, it's it's something you have to keep an open mind about. From what you've seen so far, how would you characterize the battle uh, for QB2, uh, Timmy McClain, Dylan Risk? Uh, what have you seen? What do you like? And, and, and do you see some separation there? 
not a lot of separation. Uh, I, I think uh, – I really think we have four quarterbacks, KJ, Timmy, Dylan, and uh, Riley Trujillo. I think we have four guys that are capable of stepping in and playing, and that makes me feel good about what's going on. I, I, I think um, – but right now I think it is Timmy and Dylan. I think they're going to split time in this scrimmage probably with the twos. Um, and you'll probably see Trujillo you'll get some work with the threes. Um, but it's KJ's job to lose as the as the first teamer, as you know. But I, I feel pretty good about both the other two guys. They, they've really made strides uh, and improved a lot. And I like what I see from both of them. They're different kind of players. Um, uh, Dylan is more of a Plumlee type runner. Not as fast as Plumlee, but he's a, he's that kind of player. Um, Timmy's more of an evasive, elusive kind of guy that uh, you don't know where he's going. Uh, so, you Does know, does he know where he's going? He, I think he has great instincts. <laughs> I really do, and he has done a great job of extending plays and then doing the right thing at the end of that, uh, which before I don't think he always did. But he's gotten a lot better at that, and I I got to give Darren Henshaw credit for that. He's he's really helped him a lot, I think, and and really Dylan Risk as well. Uh, both of them have really shown out to be very capable players, and and I I think we're in good shape with both either one or both of them. So uh, it remains to be seen. Uh, there's still time. This scrimmage will be important in that regard to see who if anybody separates themselves from them. Right now, it's hard to see any separation there. Just they're different. Hmm. Uh, of course, uh, Kobe Hudson's, uh, you know, been held out, uh, took a knock, uh, and, and they're protecting him. Uh, one of the areas you know I what? have concern about is just that battle for wide receiver positions. Are, are you seeing well, anything there? I mean, nobody's really tipped off that anybody is, has got a leg up on anybody else so far. Well, obviously, we know what Kobe can do, and I, and I think he'll be ready to go. And he's he's out there, and he's trying to be a leader too. But uh, I I really think that um, um, Trent um, has improved a lot. Um, uh, I think that uh, Gerard Baker uh, and Chauncey uh, um, Chauncey Maker. Chauncey, yeah, Chauncey has improved a lot too, and has shown some good things. Got a couple of freshmen, one freshman in particular, I think, that may have a chance to step up uh, in in uh, Richardson. So uh, I, I I like what I've seen, and and there are, and and actually the last scrimmage, um, the the kid, the transfer from Florida State stepped up and made some plays, and that was Goldie. good to see. Goldie, yes. So are you so, prepared to leave spring camp with not a clear three? Well, I think it's. I think it's clear right now that it's Whittemore and, and um, Xavier and um, uh, probably, Kobe. well, Kobe, but Jared Baker, if Kobe's not there right now, those three are the guys, but Magwood can, can step up. I think he's made, he made some plays and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, Richardson is just a true freshman, but uh, he's, he's enough talented that, uh, and he doesn't look like a true freshman physically, you know. So I think he may end up being in the rotation as well. And there are a couple other guys that, that still may show up. Um, and I will tell you, uh, I know Pittman plays tight end, but he can play out in a slot too. And uh, he's, he's done very well. He's a heck of a player too. So I think we're going to be – it may be by committee, uh, and I think it'll be a rotation, but I think that's what you got to have at receiver anyway, because those guys run their legs off. So that's what I see. Coach, you mentioned Darren Henshaw earlier. I'm curious from your perspective, what you're able to see on, on, on the field and, um, you know, in practices and whatnot, how was the relationship between Darren Henshaw, Tim Harris and Gus Malzahn forming? I know they were together previously in, in, in 2021 when Henshaw was an analyst on the defensive side, but the three of them now working together the first time on offense, what are you seeing from that sort of collaboration? I think it's, it's very positive. Um, I think that Darren is really focused on the quarterbacks as he should be. And I think it's making a difference. I think Tim does a great job, uh, you know, coordinating everything. But but Coach Malzahn's the play caller, and he's the guy uh, that's going to step in regardless of what position it is and and uh, make sure he makes the point he needs to make. So 
I, I like what I see. I think it's a very positive, um, and I and those guys have so much respect for each other. Uh, I think that it's a it's a win win win. I really do, and uh, it's I like what I see. Trey said something earlier, Coach. I probably should have asked you this a long time ago, but for the players that are there now, do they do they know who you are? Like, are they familiar with your lore of UCF? Do you get a lot of guys coming up to you, like asking you questions about your time at UCF? Do are are, are, are people are you like, hey, by the way, I know Dante. Like, are are, are the are the kids not familiar with your era of UCF football? Yeah, uh, actually, Dante uh, last year, or I think it was, or the year before, I can't remember came in and spoke to the team. So uh, those guys that were there then know who I am and, and about our, my relationship with Dante and, and I, being there every day, uh, I talked to a lot of players and uh, they know who I am and uh, I know who they are. So, <laughs> so it's been good. I, I don't try to coach any of them. Uh, if they ask me a question, I might give them a, an opinion, but I, I'm not there to coach anybody. I'm there to just be supportive. Has Coach Malzahn giving you a license to yell at a center for anything? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have no interest in doing that. Those guys are getting paid a lot of money to coach them. I'm not going to try to screw that up. So, but I got the old coach in you has to take over at some point, right? Where just by just by human nature, where you want to yell at somebody just because you've done it for so many years, right? Sometimes I'll make a comment about, "Boy, that was a bad step," or his hands were outside, or his head was down, or something like that. But uh, you know, offensive line play is, is, uh, is there's so many facets to it. So I just try to keep my mouth shut as much as I can <laughs> and, and be supportive of the players. And if, it, if a guy does a good job, I try to tell him good job. We got to so get the goal. We got to get, yeah. we got to get coach mic'd up for a practice. Just, just a <laughs> mic on coach, no, no context. I just want to hear what he's saying to him. We got to work on that for you, coach. Uh, I, like well, that. I don't know. I, like that. I don't know. That might be illegal. We'll get the we'll get the, the the beep button handy. We'll have the you know the the, the beep out button handy for you, coach. Yeah, we're we're ready for you. So, coach, let's end with this. What are the goals Saturday? What do Coach Malzahn and his staff want to accomplish? They want to make sure that the players put their best product on film, so that they can evaluate them, uh, so that they make the best decisions possible for what's coming up in the fall. And so, I think. Uh, I, th I think that's it in a nutshell, and they're building towards that. They're talking about that constantly. This is what, you know, you are what you show on film, and and you've got to do that in order for us to be able to evaluate you fairly. You've got to give us a chance to, to see what you can do. So I think that's, that is the, that's it. That's what the scrimmage is about. And um, there'll be a lot of opportunities for them. Uh, to do that in special situations and in regular game situations as well. So I think uh, the players understand that, at least the players I've been around understand that. Uh, and I think they're going to, I think they're going to give their best. I really do. I, I love the culture of this football team because I think they do have those guys thinking about what they need to do and being focused and being energetic and being tough uh, mentally and physically. So I think the culture is going to help that too. Coach, appreciate you. You see me out there. You have license to yell at me all you want. If you Trace, if I see I'm you, right I'm, the camera, you know. Please do. If, if, please I, do. if I see you, I'm coming over there and talking to you. I promise. All right. Please, Coach, please we'll please talk do. to you again soon. I enjoy being on here, guys. Thanks, Trace. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Thank Coach. You, Coach. Oh, a sharp, sharp dressed by the way, man. By the way, he was about with to say hat. a sharp hat uh, is what he was wearing. A sharp dressed man, I like that hat. Yeah, he can yeah. dress. I'll give him that. Coach Harris was also talking about that. Uh, while not everything is installed, a lot of it is, uh, which is uh, good to know that you know newcomers like KJ Jefferson are taken to what they're uh, they're giving them in the playbook. Yeah, I mean, you would hope a veteran quarterback like KJ, who's been through some coaching staff changes, kind of understands how to pick the playbook up. And, you know, I, I, I know terminology is always, always different, but it sounds like a lot of what, you know, Gus wants to run is probably stuff that KJ's comfortable with or familiar with. So hopefully, you know, we always hear the lore of the quarterback sitting down with the offensive coordinator and play caller and talking about what they like, what they don't like. So my hope is that Gus and KJ and, and Tim Harris and Darren Henshaw had those conversations as well. And I would hope a veteran guy who's on his – fourth, fifth year of college football can can grasp a playbook and, and get it down under his belt. Although I guess some people don't. My my hope would my 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 trust would be that KJ can figure that out. 
A week ago, we were talking about uh, a possible contract extension for Johnny Dawkins. Uh, nothing officially announced, though. Coach TikTok Dawkins, still waiting. Yeah, TikTok. Waiting. <laughs> Coach Dawkins was at an event in Orlando in which uh, Athletic Director Terry Mahajer was also present. Uh, Coach Dawkins told uh, WFTV Channel 9's Jared Oliver that it will come soon enough, a contract extension. Uh, you spoke about Coach as well as quite a few topics with Antoine Jones. You and Mike talked to him this week on the show. Yeah, really interesting uh, guest. Obviously, uh, one year at UCF had some some stuff he had to sit out through and and uh, had an interesting college career. But he dropped a little nugget trace that could really be interesting if you think about next year's UCF team. Last January, January tenth is when I became a UCF Knight. So I've been I've been grinding, man. I'm, I, hopefully, they give me another year of eligibility. I'm gonna uh, try to see if the NCAA will give me a waiver because technically I've only played a total of ninety seven basketball games throughout my career. So that's yeah. two full seasons, and then I played. I'm, I played eight at Louisiana, and I missed the first eight at UCL, which was probably the reason why um, the year went the way it went for me. He's moving around. I, it's the first yeah. I've seen him. I heard it on the show. Yeah. I didn't realize he was. Yeah, a lot of so moving. Bad. A lot of moving with the camera and the phone there. But interesting nugget. He's going to try for another year at UCF. He, he indicated later on that he'd love to come back to UCF. So maybe some depth, some uh, some veteran presence on the, on the floor if Antoine can get that waiver. So Fingers crossed. If not, he's going to try to go uh, test the waters in the NBA and the professional league. But maybe just maybe you see old number one suiting back up for UCF next season. And no telling uh, what the NCAA might do on a wave. Flip a coin. Yeah. Yeah. Crapshoot. Yeah. No telling on that. Let's talk a little bit more about UCF athletics, basketball, football with Kenny Morales, uh, UCF alum, who is back on Sons of UCF Live and returning back to the airwaves in Tampa soon to be a part of WFLA Channel 8. Kenny, welcome back. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. How y'all doing? Doing well, doing well. Congratulations on the move. Uh, you had changed gears a little bit and now going to be back in the scrum. Yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I, I've been working with the school district here in Tampa Bay, uh, Hillsborough County Public Schools for the past eight or nine months. and It's been a terrific job. Um, and then just lo and behold, somebody actually, uh, a friend of mine reached out to me and said, Hey, did you know, uh, the NBC affiliate WFLA had a sports opening? And I was like, no, I had no idea. I wasn't really looking for a job at that point. And so I applied, um, and you know, luckily it's, it's, uh, that old saying, right. It's about who, you know, uh, I had several people that I knew within that station already, a couple friends, and I was able to get an interview, had some, uh, had some of those friends put in a couple good words and. Here I am now, uh, starting up here in a, a couple of weeks. So excited to get back into it. Now, sources tell me that also critical to this was your recent appearance, most recent appearance on Sons of UCF, that that was really what tipped things <laughs> yeah, off. Fair. No. It, it's true. You know what? Yeah. I, I can confirm that. Um, they saw my latest one. I think that was the uh, the one before the Gasparilla Bowl. And yeah. the news director told me after that, he was like, I'm sold. That was it yeah. for me. Yeah, that's the rest of the story. All right, so spring camp is moving along. You're you're in the Tampa Bay area. What's your sense of things? We keep talking about not a lot of drama out of this camp. Uh, as a UCF fan, you got to like that, right? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I'd prefer uh, the least drama, the better, right? At least we know, like, pretty much, you know, who we have. I think mean, the most drama in terms of any spring camp is if you have a quarterback battle and. We don't have that right now. We have KJ Jefferson, which I'm super excited about because I think, like everyone said, he's the perfect quarterback for Gus Malzahn's system. You know, he's a, a diet Cam Newton, if you will. And so I'm excited to see what he can do in this system. What was that? What was that? A, a what? Di- a diet Cam Newton? Cam Newton Jr. I don't know. Whatever you want to go with. I don't think KJ. I, and, I don't think KJ and Diet go in the same sentence. I don't. No, I don't know. Not, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. That doesn't work. But you know, you get what I'm going with that one, gotcha. right? Yes. You're, p- yeah. you're picking up what I'm putting down. Um, so I'm, I'm excited and look, they have, we haven't seen a ton, at least I haven't gotten to, obviously. Um, I know Trace has been to some of the, the practices and whatnot, but the, uh, the quick clips that we have seen on social media, looks like he's getting the ball out. Well, looks like he's hitting some targets, which is great. Um, I've heard, uh, was it the freshman Braydell Richardson has made some, yeah. some really good catches has really stood out. That's exciting to hear because obviously we know about what we have with Xavier Townsend, another Tampa Bay guy that, uh, has been super exciting, uh, Kobe Hudson being back, but we need we need that third option. Who's going to be? Is it going to be Bradell? Is it going to be uh, the the Chauncey Magwood? I mean, he's a guy that did really get a lot of a lot of playing time last year. Could he be the one that steps up? So I, I'm curious about that and some other positions. Right, obviously offensive line, um, linebacker. I think is the biggest. <laughs> it's curious to see who ends up starting there, who ends up kind of in the rotation. But other than that, it's nice that we don't have a, a ton of drama. I think going into spring football. 
Kenny, what are your expectations for this Knights team? I know it's still not fully baked yet. We still have another transfer portal window to go through here, but a lot of people are saying eight, nine, 10 wins. That That's where you have to be at with this team, this roster, this schedule. Do you have any early expectations on what you want to see out of the Knights this year? Yeah, I think when you look at that schedule, I think probably around the same same ballpark you're thinking of, eight, nine, 10 wins, some around there, considering the fact that they went six and six this past year and Really, I think they should have gone seven, you know, seven and six. I, I was at that Baylor game. That shouldn't have been a loss, but, you know, neither here nor there. It was uh, your fault. You were at <laughs> Honestly, game. I felt like it was. I, I, <laughs> it was all of our faults, really. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, it was like, I don't know if you've ever seen that meme where it's like, I fell down to my knees. I literally fell down to my knees at that very last kick that uh, Boomer mixed. And I was like, there's no way I just watched this happen. Anyway. That's that's in the past, right? Um, no, I, I think with the uh, with the arrival of KJ Jefferson, with the amount of talent that you have coming back, with the amount of talent that you have coming in via portal, and some of the other guys, like I, I'm super excited about some of the guys that are coming back, like Malachi Lawrence. I'm very high on Malachi Lawrence. I thought last year he wasn't getting a ton of run um, just because you you were so deep there at that position uh, with Traymon and all those other guys. Anytime he saw the field, he was incredibly productive. So I'm very curious to see what he looks like with some starter reps. You know what I'm saying? Kenny, obviously, you're, you're a local guy. One of the things on defense that we've seen a lot so far in the clips that Trace and the other media guys are able to get for us is a lot of the youth in the secondary is local homegrown talent, guys from that Orlando area. How big a deal is it, do you think, for, for high school kids now to see kids from high schools in Orlando, in Tampa, going to UCF, getting playing time, playing in the Big 12, playing well. How big a deal do you think it is that we have a lot of these quote-unquote hometown heroes that people can look at now? Oh, it's huge. Uh, it's huge. I mean, because it's all about the, that that ability to to get to the next level and and to have that, that – to get these big games that they get to play in week in and week out, to play against some of the best teams in the country in, in a big-time conference. That's huge make no mistake about it. And so the fact that they get to see these guys play on that kind of stage every weekend, and you see some of these, these visitors lists uh, for these games. I mean, it's four stars, five stars. When I was a student 10 years ago, the visitors list didn't look like that. So you can tell what the difference is right now with, with what Gus is cooking. And it's, it's awesome to see as an alum and as a fan, because it, it really is night and day in terms of the, the amount of talent and, it really is. It starts. It starts like they talk about homegrown, which you, which you mentioned. It starts in the backyard because there's compared to Florida. I mean, yeah, you can bring up Texas, California, Georgia. Very few other states produce more or better talent than this state. And when you're talking about specific like regional areas, Orlando, Tampa, Miami, it's all right there. You can pretty much recruit your entire class right there. That's how much talent is in these in this backyard. So the fact that they're able to get those kids and keep them in Orlando, that's huge. In your expectation of eight, nine, ten wins, is a win in Gainesville on October 5th a part of that win equation? Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Yes, I'm hoping to go to that game. I really am. Me and my buddies are. You and a lot of people. A lot of I know. Fans I know. find themselves on the outside I've looking seen. in. I've seen. Yeah. I've gone to the swamp a couple times as a, as a reporter and stuff, and it's it's a terrific environment um but i'm really i've never gone as a fan so i'm hoping to get a chance to do that but yeah i mean i i, I mean heck kj jefferson beat him last year uh, uh, with a pretty bad arkansas team and a really bad arkansas offensive line so i gotta think i kind of like ucf's chances i don't know i know florida has has got a good recruiting class this year and obviously they brought back uh to graham mertz and all them but i don't know i mean maybe i'm biased a little bit but maybe uh, I like my uh, I, li I like I like UCF's chances in that game. We talked a little bit earlier about Johnny Dawkins. As you look over not just men's basketball but the whole course of the athletic season, how do you think UCF has done transitioning into the Big Twelve from football to where we are now, baseball top twenty-five ranked program? I feel like they've done pretty well. I mean, what what was it? I saw the other day UCF tweeted out, um, or I think it was all social media accounts, but you know, four teams right now are in the top twenty-five. Uh, Track and, and field, and men's sports. tennis, uh, yeah, baseball, baseball. I growings in there. I mean, last time I checked, that's pretty dang good. I, I don't know, like that's that's impressive to go from the American and then look, no no shade on the American when we were there, but it's this is a different level of competition. It is, and so to still be to to make that jump to the Big Twelve and still be that competitive that you're now you know 
one of the top 25 teams in the country in, in your respective sport. That's really, really impressive. Football, yes, I would have liked to see them do a little better, but I thought for the most part they did fairly well. Basketball, honestly, I know people are split on Johnny. I think if he had not lost that USF game, I feel like fans wouldn't be as split about it. I think they're just really upset after that. You know, it's recency bias. They're just really emotional after that USF loss. What I get, it's a bad loss. It stinks to lose to your rival. Fair, that's a good USF team. And uh, Amir Abdul Rahim's done a heck of a job with that program. But I, I think, dude, going into this season, the Big 12 is the best basketball conference in the country. And I'm sorry, I got I, I didn't fall in love with UCF until I got to UCF. Before that, I was a huge Duke basketball fan. And, and that's kind of what I knew in college basketball was all of the Blue Bloods and the big ACC programs. You can't just go from like not accomplishing a whole lot to suddenly competing with the best of the best. It takes time. You got to crawl before you walk, right? Like I understand UCF's accomplished a little bit, been to a couple of tournaments. That's great. But – I thought he exceeded expectations. I thought Johnny exceeded expectations. They won seven games in this conference. I generally went into the season thinking they're not going to win three. <laughs> like you might catch a couple games here, you might catch a couple teams here and there sleeping just because it's college basketball and it doesn't even it's college, it's professional too. Um, you know, guys overlook teams all the time, especially when you're talking about young athletes. But the fact that they were able to win seven, including I think it was a, a record, right? Didn't they win three top 25 games or mm -hmm. four? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in three top 25 wins, he got you the NCAA tournament one year. He got you your only NCAA tournament win. You've been to the NIT, I think, three times now, uh, which I think is the only time you've been. I mean, I, what more do you want? I get it. You obviously, I look, I'm right there with everybody else. I would like to see UCF do better, but it takes time. And so I'm all for him getting an extension. You know, give him some more time now that he's in the Big 12. They've got a taste of it build up the recruiting class, go attack the portal, and let's see what he can do these next two years. If it doesn't work out any better and they're right back towards the bottom, I'm all for moving on. All right, Kenny, I got to pin you down on the question of the day for UCF fans. Can I get a thumbs up or thumbs down on the <laughs> Cactus Jack collection of UCF gear that <laughs> dropped today? I knew you were going to ask me that because I was like, that's probably the biggest UCF news of the day, isn't it? Um. Oh man, That's I want to kind of go in the, the middle. I want to go in the middle. I'm going to go thumbs down, only because I'd say thumbs up for the fit that I saw Gus wore in that clip that UCF football pull out because that was actually pretty fire. Like I actually really enjoyed that sweater he had, and this, I don't know if the sneakers are part of that, but I want those sneakers really bad. Everything else, kind of, kind of mid. I, I, I wasn't a huge fan of it in terms of like I, I get it. Maybe it's not for me. I'm I'm 33 years old. I'm not a college kid. So you're out of the you know. demo. <laughs> I might be out of the demo. I don't know. Most of my gear looks like this home field apparel, vintage, like, you know, UCF or Orlando magic gear and, and, uh, you know, short sleeve, uh, button down floral shirts. That's kind of my vibe. All right. So Kenny, you're also a creative guy. I know you spend a lot of time, you know, creative projects, UCF spring game coming up next weekend. They always do something a little bit crazy. QR codes, fat men catching punts. If Gus came to you and said, Kenny, I need some creative ideas for the spring game. What do you got for him? What do you what do you got on tap for UCF spring game if you were in charge? Oh, man, that's tough. Um, OK, how about this? How about uh, every time uh, a team scores a touchdown, they get the phone from the social media admin, whoever's there in the end zone, and they create their own touchdown celebrations. I, like it. I think that'd be fun. Go viral. Come out yeah. with come out with your own touchdown celebrations, and the best one wins a prize or something. I don't know. They get like steaks for dinner or something like that. You know. I know you're I you're coming off of an Achilles injury, Kenny. I know you, I've seen your videos. I, I know you're rehabbing. There's a contest out there. Someone to to pay money to be the Citronaut mascot to then race somebody. Are you ready? Where are you in your rehab? Are you prepared to be the Citronaut and race somebody in this contest? So I, I'm fully recovered. I, I finished up my rehab a couple months ago, and in January I got like the okay from the doctors to to go ahead and and you know continue like running, doing sports, and all that stuff. I'd be all for it. Sign me up if you want to put me in that Citronaut costume. I'm all for it. I love the Citronaut. Got the Citronaut shirt on tonight. I would be all for uh, putting on my best. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen uh, the Atlanta Braves games, the Mr. Freeze impression. Yes, I'm all sure. for it. Okay, yeah, that that's my version. I'm I'm the Citronaut Mr. Freeze. All right, SJ Tui, I'm not sure if you're listening, but Kenny Morales, ready for the challenge. Please, SJ, sign me up, buddy. 
Kenny, how much editorial control will you have at WFLA uh, to lead on the weekend cast with UCF instead of that uh, green slime team that you'll have to cover over there? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a tough one because, I am I mean, I got my uh, sports director, Dan Lucas, there, and uh, he's an FSU grad for himself. Um, so know, when look, UCF I, beats the Gators, you two will be lockstep. That that's exactly. The if that happens, that's the that's the lead story for sure. <laughs> uh, no, I we'll, we'll have to see. Of course, if if UCF uh, you know wins some big games, and if I can get some time in there, I, I'd be more than happy to to put them in the uh, in the rundown there. But uh, obviously, you know, being here in Tampa Bay and being uh, with a, a local station here, the 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 primary the primary school we gotta we gotta talk about is USF, which. No hate to USF. I love my USF Bulls. They're there. I, I got a lot of friends that are USF fans. USF Blink alums. Twice. That's happened. <laughs> no, no, no hate towards them. I got no hate towards them unless they play us. Then, then, uh, then it's all. Then it's all. No, no holds barred. Then we're gonna talk some smack. Kenny Morales. Good luck in your new venture. Thanks for being with us tonight on Suns Live. Hey, thank you, fellas. Take it easy. Thanks, Kenny. All right. Uh, good stuff there. What happened in that last few minutes? Did, what, did I hear something? Did I black out for a second? I thought I heard some positive news about the cows. What? Were you okay? Yeah, wrong show. What? You, is everything all right? Is there an earthquake? What's happening here? Wrong show. All right, time for some news and notes. Yes, you would want me to do that. Hey, Night Nation. This is Miles Giller, your Sons of UCF picks expert. Now let's go around the kingdom. <laughs> Uh, I hope Miles has a better year <laughs> than he had. Easy, last, easy. Last he tried. Twenty uh, fifth ranked UCF baseball improved to nineteen and seven on the season. Uh, won fourteen one at Bethune Cookman on Tuesday. The game Wednesday against North Florida was postponed. They're going to swap those games. Uh, I spoke with head coach Rich Wallace after the win over the Wildcats, and he talked about the Knights being ranked at this point in the season. Obviously, that's a testament to what the guys have done to this point for everybody that think we're not very good. and They had to listen to all that and to play the way they have to this point. But we talked about the other day, and all the goals we wrote down, none of them were to be ranked in the top 25 on April 1st. Like That's nice, but we're not really concerned about that. We're worried about getting better for the second half and making a run at this thing. Making a run at this thing. They've won three straight series, not swept anyone yet. Kansas State towards the top of the standings in the Big 12. They welcome them in Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Weather looking good, 6-6-1. Six, six, All games on ESPN+. Plus. Then they go to DeLand for a game against Stetson midweek. Just closed out UCF softball with a win over BYU. 19-15 and 15 now, 5-8 uh, and eight in the Big 12. They took two of three in Lubbock. Uh, they got the doubleheader sweep at North Florida versus North Florida on Tuesday. Uh, so the Knights starting to get things going. Uh, three two with a win at home. They got two more uh, Friday and Saturday. BYU doesn't play on Sunday, so those games uh, line up Thursday, Friday, Saturday. BYU now with Maddie Bejarano. You remember her? Remember that two years ago uh, when, of all things, Adam, the Sons of UCF got an NIL deal back when it was help someone's brother with Down syndrome, Tanner. Uh, get to a game to to see Maddie play before it became what it is now. The Sons of UCF are who really helped out to get me an NIL deal for their podcast. And so I was able to be featured on their podcast and everything. And it was great. It was just so unique. And to know that there's so much kindness and love in this world is just so refreshing. I feel like we can oftentimes get caught up in the negatives that have happened in the day-to-day -day life, but it's so much bigger and there's just so much more to life than just the little negative things that happen. Maddie, a great story, her brother. But that was a fun time for for the sons of UCF. Yeah, I mean, I, I look, I don't, I don't know how memorable this show will be, but if that's the one thing people remember about our show, I will be completely happy. Yeah, yeah, and thank Night Nation for helping uh, raise funds uh, to contribute to that. Jada Cody uh, on the UCF softball team, recipient of the Order of Pegasus. Uh, she's pretty smart. <laughs> you got to be good academically involved at the university, have leadership, be involved in community service. She's all around uh, one of the greats in UCF softball history. Congratulations to uh, Jada. Volleyball releases its Big 12 schedule. What is it about Kansas uh, nights? Uh, volleyball going to open at Kansas September 25th. Stay over there in Kansas, play Kansas State on the 27th. They welcome in West Virginia for the uh, conference opener on October 2nd. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, about uh, no drama 
for UCF football so far through this spring camp. That's something that Eric Lopez and I, who just completed the broadcast for UCF softball, by the way, gave us a shout out for that Matty Bejarano uh, opportunity two years ago. But it was fun mixing it up again this week with Elo on Around the Kingdom. We didn't know. They didn't say anything that they were going to get rid of it or anything. They just showed something a drawing and it just so happened there was a signage Mike got a little fired up and started some things i don't know i i could go either way on that you're more invested in this you really strongly believe that should be there forever i do strongly believe that it should be there forever i also had to laugh at mike calling out ucf athletics and terry mahajer uh, this needed a little bit of journalism, uh, but that's what social media uh, presents itself as today. And I had to laugh even more when athletic director Terry Modger of the Big 12 UCF Knights responded uh, directly to Mike with, as you mentioned, as you alluded to, Mike, dude, of course it will. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of journalism here, Adam. I was out at football practice Thursday, saw Terry Mahajer. He was always cordial to me and said hi. And, and then I, I think I might have heard him say, you know, this UCF Mike guy, I got nah, never heard of him. Yeah, no, 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 no. Ooh, <laughs> sorry. I think he's with another show. <laughs> uh, catch the latest around the kingdom, as well as all of our football interviews, the interview with Antoine Jones, all of that on the Sons of UCF YouTube channel. Uh, Clay Pasco is back. The season is almost winding down as he continues to wrap up games. Will UCF become bowl eligible, Adam? They welcome in the Houston Cougars. What do you, what do you What's your prediction? Uh, I don't know. UCF versus Houston. Houston goes on the board first, and the Knights fight for bowl eligibility by starting out the game to drive down the field, and John Rice Plumlee does what he does best, and quarterback keeps into the end zone. Xavier Townsend jukes a defender to put up six more points on the board. Smack cam! <laughs> uh, Javon decides to wake up and almost takes his ball to the house which sets up perfectly for RJ to get us into the end zone for six more. The one to the end zone, give me a signal, touchdown RJ Harvey. The push puts him in the end zone. It's a 26-10 lead. A fake, looks, back pedals, flushed out of the pocket, still looking, still looking, sacked in the 19-yard line. What a pressure by UCF. We'll do it. The game is over and the UCF Knights have become bowl eligible. So their first year in the Big 12, they get a chance to play a 13 football game. The Knights get their sixth win and they beat the Houston Cougars. Ah, uh, Clay. By, by the way, Adam, uh, they, hey, they became bowl eligible just as we may have predicted. Um, how many laws uh, are, are we breaking? <laughs> we broke a few there. There's some content laws there. I'm sure we broke. I don't know if we have access or if we have clearance for any of that sound from the great Mark Daniels. So I'm sure we broke a few. But yeah, don't tell anybody it'll be our secret. Yeah, it could become a problem. Shh, our secret. Course. Clay's done uh, his version of uh, March Madness now spilling over into April. Some breaking news for you. Uh, the Sons of UCF account has uh, advanced to the Sweet 16 will be playing ad hoc underscore lover. Oh, VR. no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I just yeah, hope both teams have fun, Trace. That's also, the, uh, a shout out to Clay. He put together a 60-minute retrospective <laughs> video on his YouTube channel around some of the greatest games in UCS history. It's actually really cool. It's Again, it, it'll take some time to get through it and maybe digest it in a few different sittings. But a, a, applaud to Clay for, for putting the time in, getting all those clips pulled, putting it all together. And the funny thing is, he you know, he, he got some, some feedback like, hey, what about this game? What about that game? What about this game? So maybe there's a part two coming. But uh, tip of the cap to Clay for getting all that stuff pulled together. It's a really cool video. By the way, I advanced to the Sweet 16 against Mary Ashbaugh. Mary, I won't campaign. I will not. Hi, campaign. no. I saw this UCF Mike go down. This is a highly scientific poll. You see if Mike down I in the win. first round, though. You see if oh. Mike out, yeah, early. He's I'm out. Sorry. Who did he lose to? Uh, fifth quarter. Oh. Huh? Yeah. Who then just got? I think he. I think he lost to Jan. So Mike would have. Mike would have been set up to lose anyway. Unfortunately. Uh, rumor has it Terry Mahajer had a lot of burners, a lot of bots that contributed. He's <laughs> big on TikTok. I don't know. I don't have to tell you. Uh, it is that time again. So it's a mailbag. So what? So what? Do you know whose mailbag that is? It's that time again. Time to open the Brian W. Peterson Sons of UCF mailbag. Oh, hell yeah. No, back we'll never, all of it will never not be funny. Uh, never. 
360. What are you most looking forward to seeing from the football team this coming season? Let's see if your answer changes as we get asked this question. <laughs> Ooh, I'm sure this will be the one of many times. Yeah, I just hope both teams have fun. No, I, look, I want to see us be more competitive on the defensive side of the ball. I think there's some games where we got pushed around. Other teams are more physical than us, and it, it showed in the box score with the amount of rushing yards we gave up, and it showed, obviously, with the points that we gave up. So I want to see a more physical, competitive team, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. I want to see a fired-up R.J. Harvey. You heard Coach Harris allude to it, that he has been left off some of those watch lists and things like that from publications, and R.J. Harvey has taken note of it. I'm looking forward to seeing him run through a lot of people this year. At Black Gold underscore Ed, what did the Suns think of Big 12 Pro Day on NFL Network and showcasing uh, John Rice Plumley? I got to tell you, I had some travel didn't see a lot of it, saw clips, didn't really watch any of the, the actual coverage. But, uh, hey, if it works for the Big 12, which has uh, postponed perhaps uh, indefinitely there, it's Mexico plans. Uh, at least this foray seemed to work for them. Yeah, I will say it's pretty cool. Like it was on TV, NFL Network. Uh, no other conference is doing that outside the NFL Combine. So it's probably a really cool opportunity. And in terms of JRP, I mean, Trace, spoiler alert, the guy is really athletic, and that tested out. You just wonder, is there a spot for him somewhere in the NFL doing something? Those numbers were pretty eye-popping. I mean, again, I know he, he isn't going to have a, a howitzer for an arm, but you just wonder if the team will try to figure out a way to get him on the roster and use him in some capacity. So good for JRP, and again, I, I think it's a cool thing that Big 12 is trying to do. Add emptiness for Michael. Shout out. Best articles on UCF baseball written by Hands down. anybody. Nobody anywhere. knows more about UCF baseball than Michael. Hands down. Race over. Clay's doing a, a, a tournament of baseball people. Michael wins. Hands down. No questions asked. Yeah. Michael, who's now committed himself full-time to UCF baseball as he's a Marlins fan, and he has jumped <laughs> off <laughs> that Marlins uh, situation in the first week. Of Lost the again season. tonight, by the way, FYI. Are they 0-8 now? Yes, Ooh. yeah. Cardinals. He, Ooh. by the way, messaged me when they were down one nothing, and he said it was over. <laughs> he knows his fish. He knows now. baseball. See, that yeah. just proves it. He knows his baseball. Uh, Michael with this one. Bring one former UCF player from each major sport. We'll make that football, baseball, basketball uh one year of eligibility, who and why? Who do you bring back? We'll begin with you, Adam. Uh, how about football? Give me Shaquem Griffin. Uh, energy on defense, flying around, making tackles, making plays. Good guy to root for. Give me Shaquem. Um, a lot of guys that bring back. I thought about Kevin Smith for this one, but um, I'd still like to see uh, more Mackenzie Milton. So put me down for, for KZ at QB. He was a magician back there. Uh, men's basketball. So I'm factoring in the current team we have and who's coming back, who we think is coming back. I, outside of left field name, give me Chad Brown back for UCF basketball. Such a high-energy player. Played defense, rebound, block shots, hustled, some great dunks. I feel like we need that inside presence. I know Taco was my other option, but give me Chad Brown. I'm going to go off the board. Give me Chad Brown and his energy. I like that answer. Um, B.J. Taylor. B.J. Taylor. I, I like just everything about his game and his energy and his leadership on the court. Uh, baseball. I'm going to go way, way, hit the way, 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 way back, back machine. machine. Give me D Brown, mm, former UCF one. baseball player, former UCF football player, son of former NFL player, Jerome Brown played some time in the major league baseball. Then he played for the nationals for a while. Big, strong guy, hit a bunch of home runs. Uh, your first, uh, you know, one of those first guys that really played two sports. The, the first JRP, if you will, at UCF, give me D Brown back for UCF baseball. You need a lockdown pitcher staying in that way back machine. Justin Pope. Good call. Yeah. 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 Just a, an ace. Uh, so uh, bring him back. Uh, I like that question, though. Uh, and uh, thank you, Michael, for that. Two you, don't wanna, you don't have anybody on the rowing team you want to bring back? No. No. Next week's show, we'll get to that. No. I'll UCF have golf team? No. Nobody? I have to do a little work on the rowers. <laughs> All right. <there. laughs> uh, two letters, two words. Robert Trace, fond of saying Gus good for four losses a year. Prove me wrong, Gus. I'm not backing off. I question which four games in 2024 are going to be losses that we can lay squarely at Gus's feet. Gus, the play caller of this team. Um, I'm not convinced they win at Gainesville. I do not think they win at West Virginia. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Utah game is a problem on Black Friday. And what was the other one that I uh, – I'm trying to remember the other one that I – Iowa sure State, I maybe? Iowa State. I think was it because uh, I, I feel like they'll be all right at home. Um, Arizona, 
maybe. But I feel like they'll be all right at home. It's the road. I think it's still shaky. Uh, that's that's two or three. But what's which one of these? So Gus is good for a head scratcher. Which one of these is the head scratcher? Where you go? What? How did we lose to? How did well, that happen? Because there's like yeah, a but, head scratcher in there somewhere. Yeah, but it could be the situation. I mean, Baylor became the what game, and so that there? was at hand. So, so there's an uh, ECU game. There's a Navy. There's always the game where you go, "What the hell just happened here?" That Navy game is an underrated loss. It doesn't get talked about in the annals of UCF history. Is <laughs> at 11 a.m. came early, Trace. Yeah, that's, that's a bad loss. Uh, Brian Peterson, if you were Timo, how long of an extension do you offer Johnny Dawkins? I exchanged messages with Brian earlier this week. Ten years, Brian. Ten years I'm giving Johnny to prove himself. Uh, three to five. I think so. What I what I need clarity on, he has one year left in his deal, right? So he keeps his one and I'd give him two more. So like a total of three years for Johnny Dawkins. So I guess that's a two year extension, assuming that he keeps the one on his contract. Gotcha. At uh, Lusano 025. Now that men's basketball wins basketball done football, barely starting. We have time to watch the movie, the Highlander. He's asked me this question multiple weeks. I've never seen this movie. Have you seen this movie? I couldn't tell. I don't even know what it's about. I don't know who's in it. Uh, as UCF Mike said, I got, I got a lot of stuff going on, man. I got kids. I got a wife. I got a job. I don't even know what the Highlander is. I got, I got too much going on. Mm. At uh, the Dr. Drew, what's your favorite? Oh, by the way, I'll get to the, uh, to the movie, but next, yeah, I, can I get, when can I get a movie review? I'm going to hold you to this. Uh, I, I will Put get it on the rundown you. by July. I need a movie review of the Highlander. I'll, I'll make a note of that. At the Dr. Okay. Drew, what's your favorite big 12 non UCF account to follow? That's, ah, it's easy. The 10, 12 network account. Uh, cheap plug. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's a great account. Um, I, I mean, they all make me laugh. I mean, I, I like, I like accounts that make me laugh that kind of randomly sort of pop up. Cyclone Larry. Time. That's good stuff. I kind of like big game boomer just because everybody else hates him. <laughs> so I just love to see the hate he gets. Does he everybody hate him? You, you I, like him when he ranks your, your program in some favorable way. Yes. But whenever he puts out like the top 10 popsicles and he gets like 9 million messages calling him an idiot, I just, I find that funny. And the one I like, like is when he names a restaurant and nobody <laughs> near UCF yes. eats at that place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I do love a good, a good uh, yeah. big game boomer. Uh, at Mr. Matt Dolan, we will end the show. A late ad. What is the max dollar limit the Suns would pay for UCF branded T-shirt or sweatpants? Uh, this is coming on the heels of this uh, clothing drop today. And uh, do you I have any idea long. who Cactus Jack is, Trace? Do you have any idea where that comes from? Why it's a thing? But this is the same guy that said Andrew Cherico. Hey, did you get to meet Ty? <laughs> <laughs> No, I knew, I said to Andrew, I knew that it was T.I. And he I said, guess. but did you know who he was? I go, nah, I didn't know who he okay. was. Okay, right. No, I mean, so before this okay. today, I didn't know. I didn't know any of this. Okay. And, and yeah, when yeah. I saw the prices for this stuff, no way. No way. I mean, I might wear it. By the way, what did you think of how Gus looked uh, sporting it? It was good for a laugh uh, from the players. Yeah, look, yeah, I look, you do it for the players. I get all that, but God love him. Please don't walk out in public like that, Gus. The shoes, like, I agree with Kenny. The shoes, I, 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 it's not like, with the shoes. I don't think those are part of the collection, though. Those are the typical Cactus Jack. So, Cactus Jack, by the way, is uh, Travis Scott, who's a famous uh, uh, rapper. I think he's the father of Kylie Jenner's kids, right? The shorter one. Um, yeah, you know all this stuff. Astro World, you got all figured. Yeah. He's beefing okay, with Drake right now. Don't worry about all that. my eyes. Nod, yeah. nod now. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of what would I pay you, I'm also the guy wearing a polo shirt that was probably upwards of 80 bucks. So polo shirts, I will I will output a little bit more. There's some nice, you know, Cutter and Buck. There's some nice Johnny O shirts. You know, those those are fine. I, I don't wear sweat. I live in Florida, by the way. I don't wear sweatpants, so I don't I don't have any need for a sweatpants. <laughs> Matt so probably wear sweatpants. Right? Under yeah, Matt and yeah. there's a lot under a hundred bucks. I think is my limit, and it's probably only going to be a polo shirt or maybe a really nice hoodie. Hundred is the max. That's it. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, I'm not spending a hundred dollars on any of that. So I wouldn't spend it on that. I'm just the question is how much would I spend for UCF branded gear? You give me that hundred hundred buck price point and below. That's where I'm at. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, everybody, for your mailbag questions. Hey, Adam, what's in the box? That's a great question. You know what? I know what it is in the box. I know what's on the box, though. It's a promo for Charlie Hustle. Again, 10, 12, 15, TEN 1215 gets you 50% off non-sale items, kids. Don't be greedy. All right, here we go. Uh, we're running out of questions in here. I got three left it's, here. It's time for questions. More I'm going to need to get so a crowd serve some questions. Mario, where are you at? I need your help on that one um mario wait <laughs> what happened to mario oh he got knocked out and clay pascos 
bracket by some. All right. This is interesting, Trace. Which of these two things makes more sense to you? Decaf coffee or non-alcoholic beer? Well, I don't drink coffee and I would not drink an alcoholic beer, but uh, which makes more sense? Yeah. Which, which I guess, I don't know who wrote this. <laughs> this may be a UCF Mike question, uh, although I wrote it down. I don't know who the impetus Does it look it. like your handwriting? It is my handwriting. That is for sure. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know that I came up with that question. Decaffeinated coffee, just because you want the the smell and the taste of it in the morning. But nobody, unless you have a drinking problem, I guess, and you shouldn't really be tempting yourself with non-alcoholic beer, would be my guess. I, I don't think anybody <laughs> should be drinking non-alcoholic beer. <clears throat> Matt Dolan says decaf coffee makes more sense. I, I tend to agree with you. I think, like, to your point, what 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 purpose would a um at a non-alcoholic beers i guess you, it would have to be somebody who isn't able to to imbibe on the uh, on the spirits per se but don't people only i don't so also not a coffee drinker fy fyi so you and i may be the only two people in the world that don't, don't drink coffee is, is the only reason you drink coffee is caffeine yes like isn't everyone needs that caffeine jolts in the morning so if you're not going to get the caffeine jolt what the hell are you doing what's the point good call designated driver matt dolan yeah but just have water then like why even you know why even mess with the Bud Zero, I don't know. What is, uh, do they still make this uh, Sanka? Is that a thing? What's that? Is that decaffeinated coffee? I, you just dated me. I have no idea what Sanka is. No, I think it's like a decaffeinated coffee. Don't I tell me no. That. I don't know what it is. You would tell me no. I don't. <laughs> I'm <laughs> lonely, bubbly. I'll take the yeah. alcohol and some vodka. <laughs> See, that's a man right there who's always got to figure it out. I'm going to go decaf coffee because if, you, if you're only drinking coffee in the morning for, for the thing. Now, I, I think it was my uh, my late grandfather, rest in peace. I recall that he used to drink a cup of decaf later in the night because he didn't want to be up too late. And I've always thought that was weird because I was like, well, why I do that at all? But he was my grandfather. What are you going to do? So yeah, I think decaf coffee. That's just called water, Brian. Non-alcoholic seltzer <laughs> is just water <laughs> at that point. Although I'm in. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that is what is in the box brought to you yeah. by the fine folks. <laughs> Charlie Hustle. Charlie Hustle, T E N one two one five, fifteen percent off non sale <laughs> items. So subtle. I want to thank Coach Lounsbury for the insights. He brings us guy studies things at practice, so it's a, a good insight. Takes notes, yeah, absolutely. And Kenny Morales again. Congratulations to Kenny. Glad that he's part of the UCF alumni family, and congratulations on his next move at Channel Eight. Adam, we got big doings next week. We got uh, getting close to a spring game. There'll be other things to talk about, and we'll plan to be back here same time, same social media channels, eight o'clock. Thursday for Sons of UCF Live. For Adam Eaton, I'm Trace Trollco. Go Knights! Charge on! I'm Grant Stevens. I play tight end here. Thank you for watching the Sons of UCF. Play tight end. Hope he has a big year. Yeah, good kid. He's a lot.